Manchester United. I've got a theory on why that is total nonsense, and I think uh, you will all agree, maybe not all of you if you're not Manchester United fans. Pereira signed the new contract. Absolutely brilliant news. We'll be giving you the full details on that. And Matthew McFadian's made a contribution through the live Super Chats already. He says, David De Gea's United contract has been cancelled as his perform as Mourinho's performance in the game for Grenfell Tower match um, has made him the first choice goalkeeper. Some good footage out there of Mourinho, in all fairness. But I just want to say thanks to all you lot straight away. It is the middle of the international break. The fair weather fans disappear. Disappear during the international breaks here. And uh, for all you hardcore United standers, big, big thumbs up to you lot. Because United is not for Christmas. It's not for the summer. It's not for the transfer window. It's here for life. And uh, you should be keeping up to United's uh, latest news and keeping in uh, touch with the United stand community throughout the year because I certainly do I can't I can't I can't not so let's get straight into this Gareth Bale snubs Manchester United the sort of headline that I could give you an equivalent Liverpool win the title Origi top scorer and Origi wins the golden boot and James Milner wins the Ballon d'Or. It's exactly the same sort of uh, of title there. I mean, and, and Origi's left Liverpool, so he won't be the Golden Boot winner. And also, just you know, in case anybody actually thinks Liverpool have got a chance of winning the title, they've got no chance. And there is no chance, no way, no way, Jose, that Gareth Bale snubbed Manchester United. And if that can be in the press like it is, then we can put it back in the press that United snubbed Bale because that there is more likelihood that we did snub Bale, then he snubbed us. I personally don't think there was ever a deal on the table, but the story in the press today is that Real Madrid accepted £92 million from Manchester United for Bale, and Bale refused to move because he's unconvinced by the project at Manchester United, and he wants to stay at Real Madrid because they're the best team in the world. This has led to players at Real Madrid, Zinedine Zidane, the manager, and Perez, the president, being furious with Gareth Bale. I think it's absolute nonsense. I do. I really do. Now is not the time to. Um, well, I'll come on to that in a minute. But let me just let me just kill this dead. And, and this is my theory. And I think our theory has as much weight as any of these nonsense press reports you you see about Bale snubbing United. I mean, look. The bottom line is Real Madrid are double Champions League winners. They are the best side in the world at the moment. I can't make an argument against that. But I can make an argument against point scoring about oh, Real Madrid are a bigger club than Manchester United and Bale snubbed us. What absolute nonsense. First of all, first of all, why would Manchester United leave themselves wide open to Gareth Bale to, Man to, to Manchester United and offer money to Real Madrid? When Real Madrid messed us around for six weeks over Morata, why would we comprehend trying to do a deal with them for Gareth Bale in the last two weeks of the summer window? So that's one point. Two... As we've discussed all summer, if we dealt with Real Madrid... I mean, I, you know what? I can't be bothered to go back and do it because not many people would watch it. But <laughs> but um, laughing at your own jokes is sad. But I did say back at the start of May, I can't see us doing any business with Real Madrid for one simple reason. They want De Gea. We don't want to sell them De Gea. So we almost need to just ignore Real Madrid for the summer because all they'll want in return is De Gea. And exactly the same thing. Why would we go and try and deal with Real Madrid when they would say we want De Gea? So how can we be snubbed by Gareth Bale? Because the scenario, the best case scenario Real Madrid or the press could ever put forward is this. We offered £92 million for Gareth Bale. Real Madrid accepted it and do exactly what they would do is say we want David De Gea as part of the deal. Manchester United say up yours and walk away and we snub them there's no way that we go to the point of there's 92 million pounds for gareth bale real madrid go thank you very much but we want de gea instead um okay that's fine de gea can go uh gareth what do you think no i don't want to go to manchester united i don't believe in the project there i want to stay here where i'm not very popular Nonsense, 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 nonsense. Not that it never happened. It never happened. And that is why Manchester United snubbed Gareth Bale has far more credibility than Gareth Bale snubbed Manchester United. Because when you scratch the surface of it, it is a load of nonsense. There is no way Gareth Bale snubbed Manchester United. It is a paper story to sell papers, to suck people in, to make Real Madrid look really, really popular. But there is no way. It is common knowledge. Real Madrid want De Gea. They wanted him all summer. Manchester United won't play ball. That's why they wouldn't play ball over Morata. 
If we'd offered the money for bail, they would have said we want De Gea, we would have said no, we would have walked away. There is no way it ever got far enough for Bale to snub us. It's nonsense, absolutely nonsense. Stick up for your club, stand up for Manchester United, don't take the nonsense, don't take the L. We were not snubbed by Gareth Bale, it's got no credibility to it at all. My second point I want to make is, now enough is enough. I've played my part, we've all played our part. The transfer window is shut. We are United, we are Manchester United, we are top of the league, we go with what we've got and we win this title. The enemy is out there, the door is closed. We're Manchester United, we're Manchester United fans, stay together, no more moaning, no, there's no point. We've got what we've got. Moaning about not having a winger, moaning about the squad not being good enough, moaning that we've let Pereira go, all valid points up until yesterday. The window shut. We go with what we've got. We stay together and we go for it. And if there is an if there is an element of I told you so in May 2018, then we can discuss that then. But for now, we're Manchester United and we need to stick together. Um, we've had a comment from Jeff Hepner. Thanks for the comment, uh, super chat comment. Sorry. It says, Mark, I love the show and the community. Glory, glory, Manchester United. What are your thoughts on Lindelof not even making the bench and sending Andres on loan? I'm frustrated. Jose deserves better. Thanks for the contribution. You can make a contribution through the Super Chat option, which is the dollar sign at the bottom. Always leave us a question. I don't know what the lighting is very good tonight. Mm, I'm liking it. But Saturday Night Live is a Saturday Night Q&A, so I will be taking a lot of your questions in a moment. But let me just answer Jeff's question there about Pereira, because that's the second point. Come on. I do want to reaffirm that, though. Let's get together now. Let's get to... No, no more singing. I've been told. Let's get together now. We are all Manchester United fans. No more infighting. We can all, we can all have opinions. We've always cultivated and promoted that. But in relation to signings and this, that and the other, we're top of the league and we go with what we've got. I wanted another player at least. I'm sure a lot of other people did. But we are where we are. Now, Andres Pereira. I did the video last night. Didn't want him to go. Still think it's a bad decision. Should have gone on loan to a Premier League club. I've had a bit of time to think about it. And... Um, it's it's one of those. Scott McTomney has been promoted from the youth team to be part of the first team setup. I don't think he's good enough. I think his career will be hit a ceiling of championship football and he very nearly went to Wolverhampton on loan. I don't think he's going to be a Premier League player. That's my opinion. Maybe, maybe I'll be wrong. Um, Pereira, as I said before, I, I, I'm 100%. I'll argue it with anybody. Pereira is better than Lingard. But Valencia... My concern about Valencia is that he's already done La Liga, but the comments coming out of United from Pereira and Mourinho today have reassured me, and I feel very, very happy about it now. He signed the new contract. Um, his contract was up at the end of this season with an option to extend for another year. His new contract is up in two years with an option to extend it for another year. So he's here, here for three more years. Mourinho has verbally said that he sees Pereira as a United great of the future. Fan Dabby Dozy, I do as well. That's great. Pereira has been very complimentary about Manchester United. So ultimately, like I said, we're all United. It is what it is. We need to just go with it. We go with what we've got this season. Pereira's not here. He's at Valencia. We get to watch a bit of La Liga. Great. I like La Liga and I'm going to enjoy watching Valencia. Of course, I wanted Pereira to play now. He's only 21. He's not 22 until December or January. That is nothing. And, and you know, for a 21, 22-year-old, he's played first-team football for a team that got relegated in La Liga and he was fantastic. He's now going to play for a better team in La Liga. Um, he's just got to keep growing. He's got to keep growing. The signs are good. The signs are good. The contract is good. The positive tones from Mourinho are good. The positivity from Pereira is good. There's clearly no falling out. Um... I wanted him to stay. I'd much rather he went to a Premier League club, but I feel very, very positive about today. Um, Sheil Lee says, Bale rejected United, not the other way round. Uh, oh, no, it's not Sheil Lee, it's Shell Lee. Yeah, let's all believe the Daily Express. Yeah, let's let's believe the D Daily Express over actual logic that I've already been through at the start of the video. Take the L or go and listen to the video. There is absolutely no way Gareth Bale rejected Manchester United. It's not logical. It is not logical. Real Madrid messed us around all summer. Real Madrid wanted De Gea. We offered 92 million for Bale. Real Madrid say we want De Gea. We walk away. There is never an option for Bale to snub us. It didn't happen. And I'm promoting the fact that we snubbed them because there's just no way it would get that far for Bale to snub us. Um, Sheldon Jones says, I've been telling my friends that United would get bail for the past two seasons, hoping my prediction finally works itself out. What do you think? 
I'll tell you what, Gareth Bale's 28. Gareth Bale is... I wanted Bale. I said Bale would be a good player. He can put a wicked delivery in. But he wouldn't want to play as a left wing back. He wouldn't want to play as an out-and-out left winger. We go with what we've got. I know that's going to be my line tonight. We go with what we've got. Martial is a potential Ballon d'Or winner, as is Pogba, as is Marcus Rashford. That's the future. That's the flair of Manchester United. I would rather we go with what we have and not have this nonsense with Real Madrid, which I predicted we would have. We were never going to get a player for, from Real Madrid. So let's see what happens. I think, as I said last night, Griezmann will be a Manchester United player. It is the most obvious thing. He was going to be a United player. He didn't come because of the Atletico Madrid ban. There will be an agreement there. There will be a respect there between Griezmann and Mourinho. He will respect what Griezmann's done for Atletico Madrid. Griezmann will respect Mourinho's patience and the fact that they've left him the number seven shirt. He's best mates with Pogba. Griezmann will come. We don't need anybody else. Um, fire the questions in. That's what I want now. Um, Fortune says Andres Pereira is better than Fellaini. Well, there's no argument there. Uh, Jeff Hepner says, I agree. Andres is going to be a Manchester United great. So happy with the contract getting done. I hope he has another killer season. Yes, me too. Um, Jeff also says Real Madrid can suck it. If we bid £92 million, Madrid would pack his bag, said Lee Davies. Um, Ty Tyrion Lannister says, are we going to live in denial now? No, we'll, we'll get wet. Poor joke, I know. But look, you know, can we just park the bail thing? What I'm, what, what I'm not getting back is why people want to believe... Um, an article in the Daily Express, which is the UK pe pe paper, which is not credible. They are not credible. They are not credible. I can, can only say it a hundred times. Why are people choosing to believe a negative story against our club in le instead of a logical one? It's a logical explanation to say that United never would have got to be snubbed by Bale because Real Madrid would have wanted De Gea and we wouldn't give them them. And that's the end of the conversation. It wouldn't have gone as far as Gareth Bale being able to snub it because for Bale to snub it, and if you believe what the press say, Real Madrid ex accepted the deal. We bid the deal. It was all up to Bale and he refused it. It would never get that far because Real Madrid, as part of the acceptance, would want De Gea. And also, they wouldn't let him go for 92 million when they've seen um, Mbappe going for 166, Dembele going for 135. There's no way you get a prime Gareth Bale for 92 million pounds. There isn't. So it's just, it's just a nonsense story. A nonsense story, I tell you. Do you think Pereira will become a player with lots of goals and assists, as David? Look, if you look. There's an eye in the top corner. That is a video I did on That's Football. It's our new, uh, ch it's a new channel, generic channel, talking about generic football things. Uh, the video I did today was Messi, Neymar, Ronaldo, who is the GOAT. Um, but we will be doing videos on there with uh, La Liga Weekly and things like that. Um, get on that link after this. Watch that video. Subscribe to the channel. There's some great people going to get involved in that. But watch... Valencia this season even if you watch him a handful of times I watched Granada about seven or eight times last year and Pereira was fantastic and I watched a lot of his highlights um watch him play for Valencia this year I'd be very intrigued to say to see where Valencia play him they've paid three million pounds for him three million pounds to loan him out I forgot that you get fees for, lo for loans he's very valued in in La Liga he had a very good season last year it would you know what we don't uh, a very good point that came from my brain there, which is a rarity, is that the, the Spanish people are very passionate about their football. Their media is passionate just as much as we are in the Premier League. And we live in a Premier League bu bubble where if you haven't taken the time to watch what Pereira did for Granada last year, you're probably a bit ignorant to it. But just like when lone players have come into the Premier League in the past, whether it was people like Klinsman the second time or... Um, you know, Henrik Larsson, people like that. And we get really passionate about how well they've done in the Premier League. They, in La Liga, the viewers, the press, they will all, the media, they will all know about Andres Pereira because they'll have seen him last year. Um, and he's very well thought of and he will be again. So give him a watch. Um, what will our priority be this year, says Prog for Prog. It's the, it's the Premier League for me. I, 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 I did say this. I'm behind United now and we go for it in every tournament, in every game. And we just got to believe, haven't we? But in reality, I think the lack of a winger, the lack of real true depth in the squad, we're a Premier League winning side. I don't believe we're a Champions League winning side. Um, 
because I think you've got to, you know, you sort of compute it, don't you? And you go, right, in an average season, there's going to be occasions when we've got two or three of our best players out for four weeks. Um, we're going to get suspensions or we're going to get fatigue. Come, come March time, you're going to get a few people who have got niggles that sort of take it as a longer niggle because they want to be fresh for the World Cup. That happens. I'm sorry to be a cynic, but it is. You'll get somebody who's got a little bit of a knock in February and they're like, mm, if I play with this, I'm going to mess up my World Cup. This comes around every four years. So they'll be like, oh, I'm really injured. And they'll take a couple of months off and then come back fresh for the World Cup. That will happen. I just think we don't have enough for the Champions League. But the Premier League, that's where it's at. And we can win the Premier League, as KJ Rodriguez says. Um, and Fortune, I agree with you. Next year is when we should go for the Champions League as Premier League champions. Which player in is... Uh, Shaka Phillips says, Mark, which players in our De Gea are future and potential Ballon d'Ors? Um, De Gea, a goalkeeper, very rarely wins the Ballon d'Or. Uh, I think Pogba's a Ballon d'Or winner. Whether it's at Manchester United or not is, is open for debate. Rashford could win it and uh, Martial as well. Um, they'd be the four I would go with. Um, I'm actually thinking of doing a video on That's Football about um, top, five, uh, top five predictions for Player of the Year in the Premier League. Because in, on a totally separate note, I've just got a funny feeling that... Uh, Mkhitaryan could be player of the year I just I, I, he has the potential to do it I mean he's not even playing well and he's got four or five assists um, he's playing central I think he could be absolutely amazing this season so there's your little uh, there's a little tip for you um, Raj says sell De Gea to Madrid we've got Jose we could give any team in Europe a good game bar Real Madrid says Brody Hanley I think we I think on our day we can beat anybody I'm not saying we can't win the Champions League because our team isn't good enough I think our first 11 is good enough, but you hit a point in the season where you can't play that first 11 every week. And I think in the Premier League, our squad is good enough to grind out results when we can't do that. But in the Champions League, it's, you need your best. United would need their best 11 every round every round of the knockout to, to make it through. Um, I've got an itch in my eye. Um, who do you think will replace De Gea, says Ebador Rahman. Maybe Pereira, not Andreas, the uh, Joel Pereira. Mark, what are the key signings that have to happen for us to complete for the Champions League? Uh, Griezmann, anybody else? Um, we're not far off in relation to the 11 that we have at the moment. And you look at, I mean, I mean, let's look into the future. This team wins the Premier League, but we get knocked out in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. And in a year's time, we're like, well, a year, you know, next summer with the transfer window over, uh, World Cup over and the transfer windows open. What would I be looking to do? Well, you might have Pereira off the back of a fantastic season for Valencia, new signing. Fozu Menza off the back of a great season for Crystal Palace, new signing. So that's two players who are from our youth setup coming in. Twansibi's a year older, Rashford's a year older, Martial's a year older. We'll be a better team next summer if everything goes to plan. We will be a better team. We are a young team and these players will be better for it. You add Griezmann into that. You know, Lindelof's probably settled by then. Bay and Lindelof are very young. Jones is still young. Smalling's still young. We need a fullback. We do need fullbacks. Luke Shaw can hopefully solve the left back position. Valencia needs a replacement, but maybe we've got that in Twansibi or Fozu Menza anyway. Um, yeah, I, I don't think United are far off, and I think that's why a lot of people probably got a little bit frustrated that we didn't just get that winger because we've got tall players in our team and we haven't got anyone to put a cross in. That is the frustration. It's just, it just would have been another string to our bow. Um, but I don't think we're far off. Where do you think Griezmann will play, says Jonathan Gorbett. Thanks for the contribution. Uh, right wing, question mark. In the current situation where we play, Griezmann could play in the Mkhitaryan role, he could play in the Mata role, or he could play in the Marshall Rashford role. He could even play the Lukaku role at a push. So... That's the brilliance of uh, Griezmann. He can play in any of those positions. His best position is probably the Mkhitaryan role, to be honest. With Pogba and Matic, just your two midfielders. Um, Rain Supremo says we need three more to compete. Um, Fionn Curtin makes a good point. This, he says if, if Sir Alex Ferguson had retired in 2002, it would have changed football history. It would have certainly changed our history. Um, there was also rumours that uh, United wanted Wenger. God, imagine what could have been. But I also read today that Sir Alex Ferguson was thinking about resigning in 1998, the year before the treble. It just shows, you know, circumstances, um, fate is very, very true. Fate exists, whether religion or anything else does. I mean, I certainly after the 
you know, a couple of weeks, I think there's something out there. But um, in relation to fate, I mean, I look back on my life, and I'm sure you all look back on yours. And you know, my my life pretty much from 18 just shifted. You know, that film Sliding Doors is fantastic. I mean, my whole life, meeting my wife, having my kids, living in Ireland, the United Stand, everything, everything I've achieved, every job I've done, everything I've done in the last 12 years really did come down to one moment where me and a mate were uh, taking the mick out of our, another our mate who we didn't even realise was in the toilets and he stormed off. And uh, we'd always been really good mates together. He went off and uh, had a hump. Um, we walked out the we walked out the toilet to try and find him and he come running across the road and basically tried to attack us we didn't speak to him for six months and that summer we went on a holiday on our own which we never would have done if it would have been the three of us we were planning to do something else i went on that holiday with my mate met this girl who made me move, who i moved to ireland with that's where i met my current wife and it's all because that split second where we decided you know to have a bit of a joke we didn't realize he was in the toilets fate is massive and you know sir alex ferguson going back to what we really want to talk about football um, if he'd retired in 1998, we wouldn't have won the treble in 99. But we could have got somebody else in who won it in. You know, we could have won more Champions Leagues. I don't. You just don't know. Fate's a funny, funny thing. Um, Pereira wants to play in the World Cup. That's why he's gone to Valencia on loan. Sartaj Khan, very good point, of course. Um, he's good enough. He's good enough. I mean, I can't wait for the World Cup next summer. I've got to say, not from an England perspective. I just think from a football, uh, from a football point of view. Um, I love me football and um, I think France and Brazil look very, very exciting. Um, and I just hope there's a lot of United players actually there because that always makes it better. I, I mean, in recent years, I've just fell out of love of English football because they're just, they're so bad. They run badly. Their players are just arrogant. The, the managers are inept. The, the football association is just archaic. But what I do take great satisfaction in is, is when all you, there's a load of United players playing in the World Cup. I mean, Martial's got his work cut out to get in that squad because Deschamps doesn't like him, but hopefully he can. Um, GTS580 says, who's better in their prime, Schweinsteiger or Pogba? Um, it's hands down Schweinsteiger and no one's going to like me saying that because they're going to judge Schweinsteiger on what he was at United and they're going to judge Pogba on what he is at United. And if you're judging them on United careers, Pogba obliterates Schweinsteiger. But if you're old enough to remember what Schweinsteiger was in his prime and you were old enough uh, viewer of the United Stand that you you saw the transfer reaction show I did two summers ago when Schweinsteiger signed and I just couldn't shut up I was so happy um, he's one of the best midfielders of, of, of my generation of my you know view my football viewing life um, up there with Roy Keane so you know Schweinsteiger was a fantastic player I hope Pog, I hope Pogba can emulate that he's still very young in his career Pogba he's got two three four years before he's in his prime um, Mark, do you think Lingard will play in the England squad for the World Cup, says Darren Lee? 100%. I think Phil Jones will go as well. I think Chris Smalling will go. Um, that is um, that is not a reflection of... That is a reflection of England's quality. It's poor. You know, the, the squad is poor. End of the line. Uh, try supporting South Africa. You're lucky you have England, says Robbie Jones. Yeah, but the trouble with England is we think we're going to win the World Cup and we've got absolutely no chance. Um... Chuck me some questions. Anthony Wright, can't wait for the Premier League to start again. International football is dull. This will make you laugh. My living room isn't massive, but it's sort of set out that you can sort of kick a little ball around that around. The, the, the sofa chair at the end is a bit like a goal. It's a two-seater. So I can sort of do it from one end of the room and just do shots. And I played a mini game today, Stoke v United, doing loads of shots. Stoke had loads and loads of shots. It's a difficult game to explain. I probably should do a video on it, but... It's not, you don't get a shot each. It's all about can you pass it through a thing to clear it out of your defence. Anyway, Stoke had loads of shots, scored no goals. Rashford scored one just before half time, and Lukaku got the winner in the second half. This sounds really odd to explain this game because it actually took place in my living room with just me. And I'm telling you that Rashford scored and Lukaku scored, but Stoke had the most chances. But it was effectively me using a little ball shooting into a sofa game, which had rules, um, but we did win 2 0. Um, England have no chance of winning the World Cup, says Football Red Devils, stating the most obvious statement ever. Um, Mark doesn't have a mansion, Dwarfy 15, far from it. Um, not, I'm still on holiday officially, I suppose, but I'm, I'm back home now, Minnie. Um, I'm back home 
um, back at work on Monday. Do you think the young lads like Twan Sibi and Angel Gomez will have chances on cup games, for example, says Juan Jose Maya Moria. Another good comment from you. I noticed yours last night. Um, Twan Sibi, yes. I think Angel Gomez probably won't. Uh, nice to see him get a bit of game time at the end of last season, but I think this season he's very young and he's very small um, and he's a very good player. But um, I don't know. I'd love to see him get involved in the League Cup, but Mourinho, I think, will take it seriously again. Um, Harris married Mayed is laughing. He does what I've done. I've done. You know what? I've done it for years. Even when I was lived at home, when I was like eight or nine, when the when the parents were out, I'd set up a little goal in the sofa. Sometimes I used to have to make my own ball, and um, I'd get bits of paper, get a football sock, get a big ball of set, uh, pa uh, paper, put it in a football sock, tie it all round, get it all nice and tight, sell a tape around it, and then you've got a little ball. I've, I've always played football in the living room. I'm terrible for it. Um, Mark, do you think you will do well in the Fantasy Football League um, slacking at the minutes as Carl Boardman? Hey, hey, it's only week three. Early, early days, early days. Um, it's, not a, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Um, which reminds me, make sure we'll have it back next week. The Super Brew thing as well, which is the Predictor League. That's fantastic. And I, I'm about mid-table and everything. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Um, Mourinho uses McTominay in the wrong position. He's an attacking player, says so Sartaj Khan. He likes McTominay because he's tall. He's six foot four. Um, Chad Sproul, did you see Rashford's impact when he came on for Sterling? Rashford should not be on the bench for England. It is an absolute mockery. Rashford is the best player England have got. Bar none. He is the best. He is the best talent Rash England have. But that is typical of England that Rashford doesn't start. He is. He is. He is way better than Sterling. Way better than whatever other clown they've got playing for England. Um, United don't have any player who can cross the ball well. But if you think about it, only Lukaku gets into the box and he can easily be marked down. Jesse Jack. Yeah, it's a good point, Jesse. But I just think it's that variety, isn't it? And. Um, I just hope Luke Shaw, let's not forget, Luke Shaw could be back pushing for a first team uh, place um, over the next couple of weeks. Um, a couple of weeks ago, him and Ashley Young were back in training. They were playing reserve games. Excuse me. So they could be back, which would be great. Do I think Angel Gomez will be world class as DLM 75? I think it's a bit early to say that. I think there's a lot of people saying he's going to be world class and all this, that and the other. It's ridiculous to say that about a young lad like that. He's, he's way too young for people to, to say that without it being total and utter, um, you know, over egg in the pudding. He's a fantastic talent. He's definitely a fantastic talent. But Ravel Morrison was a brilliant talent in the youth setup and he blew it. Um, that's one thing that can go wrong. I don't think Gomez has that mentality. Um, another thing that could go wrong, growth. Is he going to go? Or is he going to stay tiny? I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but in the Premier League, which is very physical, it can be a problem. He'd be more suited to the, the Orient, uh, sorry, uh, continental football for that. Injury as well can mess up a young career. I mean, I remember uh, a young winger that we had at United called Terry Cook um, around the time of the Classy 92. Very, very good player. Got bad knee injuries and that was the end of that. And he was, you know, he was touted as being a real, real future star. So there's there's so many things that can go wrong. Um, but he's got all the attributes to be fantastic. Personally, I prefer at the moment when I'm talking about young players to focus on on, on, on the now and people like Fozu Menza and Pereira keeping a very keen eye on what they're doing because I think I think they are future United players. I think they are absolutely fantastic and I'm very, very pleased with Fozu Menza's loan uh, move so far. I think it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Playing a bit for Holland as well. Um Skeptical 171, Ravel Morrison is such a huge what if and amazing talent. Ah, oh, I remember that goal he scored. I don't know whether it was for England or um the youth setup or something. It was um it was a training session. The cross came in and he sort of uh, let the ball go past him and, and moved his other foot through that on the volley. Absolutely brilliant technique, total clown as a person. I mean, you know, not just a bit of a clown, an absolute plonker. I mean, nothing between his head. Real thug. Um, some of the things he was doing, some of the, you know, I think for Sir Alex Ferguson and Sam Allardyce to wash the hands of him, I mean, he just really was an absolute plonker. And, you know, that's it. I, I played with lads at um, at uh, secondary school who were, you know, fantastic players and, you know, on the books of good teams and they blew it because they wanted to go out and do silly things. Um, it's that old saying, isn't it? You can only lead a horse to water. They've got to drink it themselves. Um 
Griezmann's price, Cameron Lindsay, will be 90 million. His, his, um, his release clause goes back down um, next summer, as we've all been told. <laughs> LW10 says, Not a football question, but from watching the United Stand for the last few months, it seems you're a keen singer. So who is your favourite artist stroke band? Um, I'd have to go with Spandar Ballet. No. Um, Duran Duran. No. Um, I'd go with Oasis. I was mad into Oasis. Um, I was mad into Britpop in the mid-90s. And I really do like Oasis. Even though I've gone off them a bit because they're City fans. But I really was into Oasis. I really liked them. But I like a lot of music now. Um, I listen to a lot of stuff that... I used to wasn't really aware of when I was growing up in the 80s because my parents used to really like music and I find myself watching I find myself listening to stuff now uh, on the train home and stuff just going through YouTube and finding stuff and listening to it and it and it's it's extremes I was listening to um, Mike Oldfield Midnight Shadow just an old song I remember as a kid and really liked it um, Dancing with Tears in Their Eyes by Ultravox. Um, Total Eclipse of the Dark by Bonnie Langford. I, lo I like the 80s music because it's I sort of remember it a lot growing up. Beatles I do like, but I've never been in love with. Um, I don't listen to gangster rap. I'm probably f as far removed as gang from gangster rap and hip-hop and rap and all that jazz um, I don't like jazz either. I, I doesn't do it for me. The blues don't do it for me. Um, not really. No, can't stand Bob Marley. Unfortunately, I'm probably losing uh, a lot of. Uh, I like Happy Mondays. Yeah. Um, I just I don't like Bob Marley's music. I've always found it really irritating. I don't know why. Because um, they were City fans. Um, coming back to life, who is your favourite player for Manchester United, says Luke Miller Chip. I'm going to bore people because everyone knows who my favourite player for Manchester United is because I get asked it a lot. It's Rashford and Martial. They're, they're my favourite two players and they have been for about the last um, 12 months. Have you seen Jose playing in the Grenfell game, says Jonathan uh, Garber. Yes, in goal. He did a good job. Um, Pink Floyd, Timeless. Okay, any more, um, any more United questions? Depeche Mode, we're okay. Um, Joy Division, I liked that. Um, the the bit of music in Heat, the film New Dawn Fades, oh, I love it. Brilliant bit of music, and of course they did the uh, the theme tune to Gigs Will Tear You Apart again. Um, it wasn't Gigs Will Tear You Apart, it was Love, Love Will Tear You Apart again. Bit deep on that one, but yeah, I like all. I like a lot of Manchester music. Um, um, as we just said, Happy Monday, Charlatans. Stone Roses, um, yeah, I prefer Manchester music to the Liverpool cast. Oh, when you say, oh, you got to say, you turn back, walk away, just walk away. Bad Scouse accent there. Um, what about Stormzy? Just no, just no. I don't, I don't dislike him. It's just not really me. I, it really isn't. Um, I love Van Nistelrooy. He's my favourite ever player for United. Is Fionn Curtin. My best man at my wedding. Uh, United fan. Just is the same. He absolutely loves v uh, Van Nistelrooy. And he's Irish as well. I presume you're Irish, Fionn. Um, Mark, what are your thoughts on the next match after the international break? Well, we'll be building up towards that next week. Stoke, I think it's the sort of game that if you're going to win the title, you win it. Um, I actually was uh, cheekily having a look at Stoke's lineup uh, this afternoon. Because I wanted to know what players I was when I was shooting. And uh, I'm not impressed. Jesse up front, who looks like a new one. Anatovic, Shakiri, um, Darren Fletcher, Joe Allen, Diouf. I think we should beat them. But that's the wonder of the Premier League, isn't it? The Premier League, anybody can beat anybody. And we're away. And it'll be a cup final for them. And 90 minutes is 90 minutes. But realistically, Arsenal lost there. We need to go and win there. I think we will win there, but I think it'll be a difficult game. Um, you know, this is where referees come into play away from home in these sort of games, and Stoke are very physical. But um, I would go with a midfield three. I'd drop Mata, and I would actually go with a midfield three. Um, Herrera, Matic, and uh, and Pogba, and go a bit physical. Uh, hopefully, we can come out the international break without any injuries. That's always the concern about the international break as well. But... Yeah, in, in short, it's a game we've, we've got to win this game if for many reasons. You've got to win at Stoke away if you want to win the title. We need to win 
to keep uh, that gap against everybody else. The longer we keep that, the more demoralising it will be. Um, we play on Saturday nights. City play Liverpool on the Sunday. So one of those teams or both will drop points. If we can beat Stoke, we start to open up a gap. We've got to beat Stoke next week. That It's all about the Premier League and we've got to do it. Um, and that's why it's very important that we are all... Um, United we've got you know we yeah we, we can some can people are really happy with the transfer window some people not so but the reality is we are what we are we go with what we've got and we've got to be positive um because this is what we've got to do this season this is the squad we have and um we've got to go out and get it we've got to go and get it um Dwarf 15 is not look for, not, not not looking forward to it I don't know why um who would be the first points that I drip? I can't predict who we're going to drop points to first. Um, Stoke and then Everton. I mean, the Rooney thing's ridiculous, isn't it? The Rooney thing is ridiculous. I'm so happy that um, he's not a United player anymore because it would just be for him and for United an absolute storm. Um, yeah. Um, I only realised today that he, uh, he's been charged with drink driving. I knew that. But he was actually with another woman at the time. I mean... You don't wish that on anybody, you know, not his wife and not him. But um, as I said last night, I'm, I'm quite, I'm not, I am surprised. I don't know Wayne Rooney, but um, there was always rumours about his drinking. But um, I bet he wishes he, he, he took the, the offer of going to England duty now because apparently his wife's on holiday. He's gone out on the pop and um, driven some uh, some bird home who sold a story. So it's... Um, I mean, I suppose it, I suppose in in many ways it goes back to what I was saying about Ravel Morrison. You can have you can have genius in your feet and sandus, sawdust in your head. I mean, Rooney's left United as all-time goal scorer, for England's all-time goal scorer, goes back to his boyhood club, has a good start to the season, and then the first international break, he's out getting absolutely hammered and getting locked up for drink driving. I mean, it's just what why. If you want to have a few drinks, just get a taxi home, you know. But it's not our problem anymore. It's just, again, it's just, you just don't understand it, do you? You don't understand it. But having said that, when you've lived in a bubble since your late teens and you're married to your childhood sweetheart and you've got loads of money and everything like that, but as we've seen with some tragic cases this year in the music industry, uh, all the money and all the fame means absolutely nothing. It can be a lonely place at the top and... Um, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, poor Wayne has got uh, issues around sort of that. You know, you live in the bubble. You can't do you can't do the things you want to do, and you lash out, don't you? Um, and you find your solace in a, in a drink. Um, your opinion on our Champions League group? Please answer. Says King Kenzie five four four. I think it's a very very good group. I forget off the top of my head. Moscow, uh, one team. Basel, the other, and I've forgotten the other one of me to forget who the, the other one is but uh, I'm not concerned by it oh Benfica um, I'm not concerned by it I think it's very good I'm, I'm really looking forward to it and uh, yeah really good really I'm very happy I think as, as I've said to you before United uh, keep rolling a six at the moment there's a lot of things gone our way won the first three games not conceded a goal scored loads of goals which helps our goal difference we then go to the end of the transfer window Big deals for our rivals fall through, which make us stronger when we didn't do anything. Um, Champions League draw, draw very favourable, should get us into uh, February in the Champions League in the knockout stage. Um, yeah, lots of things going our way at the moment and, and long may it continue. Um, the most important thing for me is Manchester United winning the Premier League. Um, I don't want us to become Arsenal or Liverpool and I know that's probably unrealistic because Arsenal haven't won it for 12 years. Liverpool haven't won it for nearly 30 years. But it's five years. United haven't won it. Um, and five years can become 10 years, can become 15 years. So the one thing, I mean, I wanted Mourinho anyway, but the one thing Mourinho guaranteed us was the title. And pretty much in the first two years, this is year two. So I think we're going to win it. Um, I've been saying that for a number of weeks. I think we will win it. I don't think it's going to be easy, but I do think we'll win it. And I think that's why it's so important that we beat Stoke next week. Because if, if City can drop points against Liverpool, we, we open up a gap. Um, there's no way Liverpool can win this title. So if Liverpool went to City and beat them, I think that would, in the long term, that would be quite good. I think City are, are the biggest uh, ask. The biggest, the biggest hurdle is United is ourselves. Like last year, drop too many silly points at home to rubbish. Um, 
the biggest hurdle we have is ourselves. If we do what we can do, we'll win this title. As simple as that. Um, who do I think the best Premier player in the Premier League is, says Chad Sproul. God, you do ask some difficult ones, Chad. To be honest with you, I mean, I, I, I don't mind being honest. Um, the first the first name that came into my head, and I have always been impressed with him as a striker, is Aguero. I think he's an absolutely brilliant striker. I know he plays for Man City, but that shouldn't stop you um, being honest. And I, I, I think Aguero is an absolutely brilliant striker. Um, I think he's wasted his career at Man City, to be honest, which sounds stupid because he's scored a lot of goals and he's won Premier League titles. But I think Aguero should be at a club like Barcelona or Real Madrid winning winning Champions Leagues. And I know he's earned a lot of money at Man City, but I do think Aguero is a top player. I don't think there's anyone in the United shirt who deserves to get even close to being the best player in the Premier League at the moment based on the last four years. But hopefully this is a new, a new dawn for United. And next summer, it's realistic. We could be saying Pogba. We could be saying Rashford, Martial. You can't say at the moment because they're just potential. They've got to do it week in, week out. They've got to go and win their title. But I would say Aguero. I'm sure a lot of people would say other people as well. Um, De Gea is the best keeper in the world. I've, I've said that for a long time. Right. Um, thanks to the 1,200 people who've watched tonight. Please do drop a like on the video. It'd be fantastic to get 1,000 likes on it because it does get very quiet in the international break. So please do drop us a like. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I've certainly enjoyed it. I feel positive. I feel glad that the transfer window's gone. I feel happy that Pereira signed a new contract and we go with what we've got is the message. If you want some more content tonight, click the eye in the top right hand corner or the link in the video description, which will take you to the video I did this afternoon on That's Football, which is something a little bit different. Um, who is the GOAT? Ronaldo, Messi or Neymar? And who will be the GOAT this season? Interesting conversation. It always is when it's Ronaldo versus Messi, but Neymar now in the equation as well. Can he win the Ballon d'Or? We discussed that this afternoon. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And even if you don't want to watch all of it, please make sure you go over there after this video, click onto That's Football and give it a subscribe. Support that second channel that we're starting up. We've got some great people getting involved in that. If you love football, you're going to love That's Football because it's more... Very similar to the United stand, but more generic. We're talking about everything, the big topics in football. And if you love football, you're going to love it. Um, and I, I don't just watch United. United are my club, but I do other stuff, uh, watch other stuff as well. And i uh, got some good shows lined up. Um, you're going to love it. You will, you will, you will. Um, Cameron's watched it already. Do I like John Cena? I did used to like wrestling, yes. Um, thanks everyone for watching. I'm going to go and watch La La Land now because the wife wants to watch it. Um, but uh, I'll report back tomorrow. No, I won't. Um, Irish Rover says Bale snubs United. Look, if you can't understand plain English, it's been explained, it's been explained to you at the very start. You, you, you've got, and people can say, oh, Mark, you're not listening to your viewers again. I am listening to the viewers, but I've read the article about Bale snubbing United and I'd rather wipe my bottom with it. There is no substance to it. There is no credibility to it. It's just there to sell papers. As I said, in very quick summary, how the hell would Bale get to snub Manchester United when, if we'd offered 92 million, which is about 40 million less than Madrid would take anyway, considering Dembele went to Barcelona for 130 and he's a kid, um... Bale's in his prime, so it's 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 not enough for what Real Madrid would want anyway, considering what they wanted for Morata a month ago. They wanted 80 million for Morata, so they're going to take 92 for Bale. Dream on. That's stage one. Stage two, even if they accepted it, they would say they want De Gea in return because they're desperate for him. We would say, no, that's the end of it. So stage three, which is asking Bale, you never get there. One, because Madrid wouldn't accept 92 million. Two, because if they did, they'd want De Gea and we'd say no. Then you've got to get to Bale and him snubbers. No way. We snubbed him, if anything. I personally think no no bid went in. It's all a load of nonsense. But I'm not having United being snubbed by Bale in a million years because it never happened. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I'll speak to you all tomorrow. Tomorrow night is um, Sunday Night Live. We never don't do a Sunday Night Live. So we're live tomorrow night at, uh, on Sunday Night Live, 8 o'clock. I'll speak to you all then. Now I'm just going to finish my beer. And then I'm going to go off.
Somebody's just said, Nan, you suck. I think they've missed the M off. Need, need to get back to school, kids. Back on Monday, innit? 